How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 12, and we're sitting at number 22 in the country on a six-game winning streak. We've got to play our rivals in Central Michigan. The Chippewas are 4-5, and five, kind of struggling this year. They have nine prospects visiting for this game, so it's a big one for them. And they are the higher overall team, although we are being favored to win. Uh, Central Michigan, who have they played? They lost to a number nine Hawaii uh, in a close defensive battle of a game, 7-14 to 14 there. Uh, they've beaten a bad FIU, lost a close one to Washington, lost a close one to Kent State, lost a kind of a blowout to Miami, but then beat Ohio, Bowling Green, and Toledo, and then just lost to Western Michigan. So can we uh, make it so they lose to both of their rivals this season? Now, we have some recruiting to do and an offensive coordinator that needs to be leveled up. So we'll just go ahead and go to John Arnold and give him that final level up in the uh, up tempo. Get that extra injury and stamina increase for our guys. That's going to be pretty big. And we don't have a crazy amount to really pay attention to in our, uh, our recruiting battles, except for Arthur Robertson. This guard, it seems like either Illinois and Iowa State, I don't remember if they weren't giving them points and they just decided to, but uh, Illinois just had their visit recently. Uh, I guess it would have been two weeks ago if it's week 12 now. And we are 28 points away from being locked out with our visit a couple weeks away. So hopefully when Arthur Robertson locks us out, we can open the door because a 79 overall guard would be huge. And unlocking the door and then getting our visit, I think, would put us in the lead into the offseason. We do have five players ready to visit. Uh, and I think all of them are looking pretty solid. Everybody that we can send again to the NIU game, we will go ahead and do that. Because uh, we want to build up all those complimentary visits. We have two there, which is pretty big. And I kind of think complimentary and one competitive, they cancel out. So we'll go ahead and send Lorenzo Pope. Kyle Wilson just has the complimentary. And Jeff Fontenot, the only guy that we're behind on a team, uh, is this guy. We're a thousand behind Florida State, but I think that we're gaining on them. Yeah, they haven't offered the scholarship, so they're stuck at that 73% locked. So uh, we won't be able to send him to the... NIU game. We can send it to the Ball State game, though. And us giving him a ton of points. Uh, there's a chance we could sneak in and steal this guy from the Seminoles. All right, our recruiting is done. We'll take a quick look at the top 25 polls and then get into our game. See if there's anything that could happen because uh, uh, after our last game, I was kind of thinking to myself, if there's a crazy amount of chaos and we win the Mac, you never know. We could sneak into a playoff spot. It would take a lot of chaos, though, because there are a lot of undefeated and one-loss teams here 12 weeks into the season. Purdue is one of them. They play a number 18 Minnesota this week. Other than that, uh, we've got a 7-1 Texas playing number 20 Kansas, and we've got Ole Miss and LSU, but just not a lot of ranked matchups. Uh, this is a very chalky season. I mean, you go all the way down to 13, and you're still seeing just one-loss teams there's a lot of undefeated teams still left. Nine of them in the top 10. All that we can do, though, is just continue to hope to win. Uh, Central Michigan, a 74 overall with a 74 offense and a 73 defense. Similar to a lot of the teams that we've been seeing this season. And once again, I'm just going to go with a random jersey combination, uh, which is different than last week's. And it is an away one, which is good. And we're going to do the same for Central Michigan. Uh, I guess there's only two options. So we're getting their alternate with the white pants. And, I mean, I don't like it as much, but, hey, the randomness decided. Let's get into this one, and we will see what we can do. Offensively, we continue to be pretty terrible, and it seems like Central Michigan is moving the ball surprisingly well, and their defense is not bad either. Uh, I mean, they're 4-5, and five, but with how many close games they've played, that could easily be something like 7-2. and two. So I'm sure that they're pretty angry about that, and now they're fighting just to get bowl eligible. Uh, and with nine recruits visiting, this is a big deal for them. Their top players aren't great. Their best is a punter. And then you go down to 80 where you have a wide receiver who's injured. And then their quarterback at 79. So all three of our top players are better than theirs, which is good news. We both have injuries. Graham's still out with that torn pack for six weeks. Uh, and that wide receiver is probable. So, you know, maybe their second best player will actually get a play today. It is another night game here at Kelly Short Stadium. 
as we get to stay in the state of Michigan for once. Feels like we've been out of it a lot this year, but we can see what's going to happen. I went with heads last time, which is kind of a one-off because we're back to tails and it never... Okay, it failed. Son of a gun. That might be the first coin toss that we've lost this season. We will be starting with the football. Just a little bit of a wind on this cold night. Maybe we can start this one off with a bang. Pool back to return. Out towards the edge. I typically like that. The blocking was not good last week. It's not really all that good this week. Although, we make something of it with Pool. Just going to continue to go downfield. Not try to get fancy. We will take the decent field position. And Albert Johnson and the offense will get to come out to work. This is a play. I just called it. And I realized it's one that I created. The tackle zone. Uh, instead of a pulling guard, it's a pulling tackle. And, well, it worked well enough. Durham Finch Jr. picking up eight yards on the first carry of the game. Albert threw the ball surprisingly well last season. He had one inaccurate throw, and it did happen to get intercepted and taken back to the house. But, all things considered, it was pretty solid. This one should have been picked off. Just kind of throwing the ball away, and Albert threw it to two defenders. I feel like... We had guys coming open deep downfield, but there's two problems. One, the offensive line doesn't have good pass protection, and two, I don't even know if Albert could have thrown it that far. Durham Finch cutting it back inside on third down, converts as we cross midfield. And now in Chippewa territory, what can we do? Handing the ball off to our starting running back again. Man, this offensive line is getting a really good push. I know that we only got two yards there, but that's mostly because of my running. I'm going to say I'm feeling surprisingly confident right now. Jerome Simmons will come in and allow Durham to rest up a little bit as we'll step back to throw. And this is a risky one, but Morris comes down with it. Somehow doesn't get tackled immediately and gets 12 yards and a first down for his efforts. So Albert gets his first completion of the day on the board. And we're going to give Jerome a carry on this first down, trying to get inside the red zone. He cuts it back and just... <laughs> Oh, man, mowed through a guy, but there's a flag down. And it's a clipping. That's brutal. That's coming back a long ways. And it's going to put us at a first and 18. So just probably because Jerome cut inside, it forced his uh, that lineman to turn around, but certainly not great. We'll get most of it back here as we go to Zach Wilson and get a second and seven. And we're back to fighting to try to get inside the red zone. Durham? Not getting the blocks that he needed. I maybe could have strung that out to the edge, but I just tried to get north. That time, it just doesn't quite work out. Now it's third and seven. Second, third down of the drive. What can we do to convert? Mitchell and Curtis going deep, but I'm looking over the middle. Let's just go check down. Morris caught that running the wrong direction. So we get a yard out of the play. That should have been a first down. That's really frustrating. Uh, I've come out to kick this field goal, and I'm realizing it might be a little bit longer than I thought. 44 yards. We'll see what we can do. Got all of it. Hit it straight. It had the distance. I just... I thought the wind was going to push it. I thought I aimed it a little bit further left. Huh. Well, that's a shame. I feel like it's been a long time since I just straight up missed a kick in this game, but that's the case. As we're going to bring pressure on this first down, see what we can do. I don't want them to have any momentum, so if we can come and steal it back, that'd be huge. And there it is. Sack on Jim Johnson. That'll drop him for a loss of eight. Defense getting off on the right foot to start their first drive. And now we can just try to contain uh, Central Michigan and try to force a three and out. A little play action pass. Hits the turf. Third and a mile. This one's going to be up to the defense to make sure that we get the stop on. Third and 18 is a long way. Just got to look for the screen first off since it is the AI. Other than that, it's just going to be watching for a pass. Trying to defend corner routes and out routes. And that one caught, but maybe out of bounds. Pump formation out on the field and the refs aren't going to review it. So the defense holds three and out. And our missed field goal doesn't end up hurting us too much. At least not yet. Chance to return this for pool. Got some blockers. And again, just bad returning from me. Well, at least we're winning the field position battle, if nothing else, as we will try to hand this off on first down. I'm going to look to get across midfield. Durham Finch Jr. breaks a tackle, stumbles, kind of breaks another tackle. That was close to being a touchdown, a lot closer than I would have expected for how it started. But he ended up getting 15. He's just feasting today. 
Stepping back to throw, though, on first and 10. Y is wide open. We give it to Curtis, who gets a block. And that's another 16. All right, maybe this time we can get inside the red zone. Got to avoid the penalties as we will run it up the middle. And, well, I guess if they're going to bring a huge blitz, we need a few more blockers. That's a loss of three. I'm just going to keep running the ball. That's all I know. Pat Robertson going in. And he, well, he got four. Or sorry, Jeremy Robertson. I get him and Robinson mixed up. And now this puts us in another third down. And it's a long ways to go. Nine. We can get the field goal from here. And I might go for the field goal. But I want more than that. Snapping back. Why? Open. Morris catches it. Out of bounds at the five. I felt really confident throwing that one. And Albert starts the game like five of six through the air. So now it's just time to run the ball down their throats into the end zone. Durham Finn Jr. on the halfback dive on first and goal. He's got almost everything that we needed. And that'll set us up nicely for what should be an easy fullback dive. Really just feel like there's nothing else that we should do here. So we'll give it to Robertson and see what Jeremy can do. And there's the touchdown on his second carry of the day. So we missed the field goal. Defense holds and it turns into a touchdown for us. We'll take a 7-0 lead. And now with just 30 seconds left in the first quarter, we'll kick this one off and see what the defense can do their second time out on the field. Special teams struggling a little bit. They get a good return off of that, so they'll start with good field position. And I think that all that we've seen from Central Michigan is passing, but I'm kind of expecting a run on this one, so we're going to bring a ton of pressure. This one a run kind of towards the edge. We bounce it back inside, but the stiff arm cheese just cannot be beaten. I feel like that should have been stopped near the line, but they end up second in inches. And they'll get a run what I expect to be the final play of the quarter. Well, it's a false start. That'll really bail us out. All right. Well, do I expect a run here? I'm not certain. Uh, set up for a pass. It's going to be a play action. Quarterback outside the pocket. Plenty of time. Bounces back inside. And it should have been picked off. Oh, Corey Poole was in the perfect place to get maybe a pick six. At least get us the ball back. But at the end of the first quarter... Central Michigan still has the football. We're up 7-0. We're playing pretty well. What is it that we can do to stop these guys on this third and five? Hoping for the best. Expecting them not to go to the uh, ground. They will step back to throw it. And quarterback all over the place. Time. Oh, man. He could have ran a marathon back there. It's his first completion of the day. And it was just because the... Uh, line couldn't get there in time. Should have been a coverage sack. Not the case. We bring some pressure and we get him back. A sack, a loss of eight on that first down. The play action catches him out on that one. And we'll just hope for the best on this second and 18. This one's going to be a screen out towards the edge. Pool there gets off the block and gets the tackle, but gives up five yards. And now we'll see a third and 13. Hopefully the coverage can last on this one. We know that they're going to throw... What can we do to stop it? Covering off the out route. They throw a check down to the running back. He's going to just get to the line of scrimmage, and the defense will hold again. They're playing, honestly, really well. And we shouldn't have even given up that one play because Corey Poole should have had an interception. But it is what it is. They're going to fake the punt. I, you know, I knew that was coming, and I still didn't do anything, but we get the stop anyways. Oh, get out of here, Central Michigan. You're a rival, so I think I can say it, but screw you. If that's how they want to play today, we got to try to bring the hammer and score as many points as is possible. And we're going to start that with a big pass here, hopefully throwing it over the middle. Oh my gosh. Did you see how terrible of a throw that was from Albert? Well, God damn it. He literally threw that directly at the linebacker. What the hell are we supposed to do with that? First and 10 and Central Michigan basically gets a free set of downs here. A little bit more stiff arm cheese gives them three yards there. Let's try to bring another blitz. I, I'm angry. We're bringing pressure until it stops working. Quarterback rolling out of the pocket. We can't tackle. So they get a first down. Oh, there's no reason that we shouldn't have the ball right now. We're going to continue to bring pressure, though. This one's a run. And another broken tackle and a touchdown. That's all on Albert Johnson. Literally nobody else to blame there except for Albert. You can't have that inaccurate of a throw on like a 12-yard pass. 
Well, Central Michigan at least is able to capitalize when the ball is thrown straight to him. Corey Poole dropped an interception for us earlier in the game that maybe could have had us go up 14-0. Instead, it's 7-all. Let's just go back to running the football, I guess. Passing, not doing us a whole lot of favors today as Finch just got absolutely clotheslined. And with Central Michigan getting the ball to start the third quarter, honestly, I'm a little bit worried. Finch Jr., good nine yards. I thought we could have got more, though. Counter to the right worked pretty well. Let's run it the other direction and see what we can get. Gonna bring Zach Wilson over, get a little bit extra blocking on that side, and well, he ran and blocked nobody. So that was worthless. How about a pass? Second and seven. Try to get somebody open. X is there. Mitchell, good job coming down with that. It's a shame that he wasn't just on a go route because he absolutely burned his man. Six of eight for Albert. Kind of like last week where just one bad throw uh, where he throws an interception. Uh, everything else has been pretty solid. Durham Finch, great run. Still on his feet. That's 17 yards. Oh, wow. Every once in a while, man, he turns on the Jets. I'm going to try to make this the final drive of the half anyways, though. Uh, inside two minutes and 40 seconds, Jerome Simmons can't quite break the tackle. Stumbles down, gaining two yards. But the last thing that I want is for Central Michigan to be tied with us getting the ball to start the third quarter. We got to stay in control of this game. And I mean, I guess that requires us to score on this drive, uh, specifically a touchdown as it's now third and seven. But worst case scenario would be that we give Central Michigan plenty of time to work with. Try to step back and throw. A open. He's going to be short. Can Zach Wilson fight for that extra yard? No. No, they gave it to him. I thought it was fourth and inches for sure, but we will take that call. Not upset with that. Ref's doing us a little bit of a favor, and now we'll just continue to run the ball with a minute left in the half. Finch needed to break a tackle if he was going to get anything more than that. Just three yards on the play as we'll go into the hurry up. And since we have all three of our timeouts, I'm literally not at all worried about the clock yet. We're getting there, but not yet. Finch with a great spin, picks up four more. It's third and three, and it's time to try a little triple option. I don't really like the way they're lined up here, but we'll try it anyways. This could be uh, where we take our first time out. No, Albert takes it, holds on to it. Albert stumbling towards the end zone. It's 15 yards, and it's first and goal down to the one. That is exactly the play that we needed there. As we'll allow Robertson probably to get his second touchdown of the game, snapping this just at 10 seconds left in the half. So that's not going to give Central Michigan a whole lot of time to work with. And we are now back up to a seven-point lead as it's going to be 14-7. to And a lot of my dynasties at this point, I'd be trying to kick the, uh, the kickoff as high as I could to make sure they had to return it. But thankfully for us, Jones isn't that good to begin with, so we just kick a normal one. They're going to return it anyways. Can't even reach the end zone. Five seconds left, but with the clock burning, almost certainly Central Michigan is going to run this one up the middle. They could take a timeout here with a decent enough run, and what's well, not going to matter? They got a decent run, eight yards on the play, but the clock expires on the half. We're going to go into the locker rooms with a seven-point lead. Couldn't ask for a whole lot more. Uh, defense has played pretty well. Um, the touchdown that they gave up wasn't really their fault. And, I mean, offensively, we've done well, except for one bad throw from Albert Johnson. Uh, I, I feel like this could be 21 to nothing. Uh, we just got to continue to play the exact same way, and we should come out with a, a nice easy win against our rivals. Try to make it seven in a row. Johnson, or Jones, getting a little bit more uh, time to practice his kickoffs. You know, it's bad when you're getting the name of one of your players wrong. Uh, it's a good job. We'll stop them pretty short of the 25. And I'm just going to continue to do what we've been doing. Bring pressure on first down. Try to force them into a passing situation. And on this first and 10, it's going to be a toss out towards the edge. We're there with Walters, but he can't get the tackle. Should have been a loss of one or two. Instead, they gain a yard. I came incredibly close to overcommitting to uh, irreparable amounts or an irreparable degree there, but it worked out. They try to run it on second down. It doesn't work, and now it's quickly third and seven. And all we have to do is keep them short of this line to gain, and the defense will be in a great spot. Didn't mean to be on the defensive lineman, but we'll take it. 
And that's a problem. Just wide open over the middle. They get 13 and convert. All right, another first down to try and work with. We'll see what Rawls can do as I'm going to step the defensive end into coverage, which is always questionable. They step back, looking to throw, trying to cover the middle, but it's an out route or a corner route from Joel Johnson. They get some another 17. Defense struggling to find their form early here. Central Michigan crosses midfield, and it'll be a first and 10. This one uh, going to be a play-action pass. I see the out route, but I can't get there in time. Young has it. He's breaking a couple of tackles, and another big play for the Chippewas. We're trying to bring pressure on those plays, but just not getting to the quarterback in time, and the coverage isn't quite good enough. This time, we don't bring any pressure, and they do run it, and even then, 10 yards. We just can't stop them right now. Certainly feels like the game wants us to fail at this point. We're going to go back to bringing that pressure. Looks like a play action. Man, wide open in the front corner of the end zone. Literally nothing to, to be done there. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that the game wanted Central Michigan to score a touchdown there because there was nothing that we could have done to stop that. Well, I'm not going to return this first kickoff of the second half for us. I want one a little bit later in the game if we need it. We'll see what Poole can do here. As again, we're all tied up. Offense needs to get to work, and that was a good return across the 30. Well, let's just keep running the football. Scared to pass, if I'm being honest. Give it to Jerome, who gets a couple of blocks, and some space opens up the middle. He makes a move, and Jerome Simmons on the first play of the drive gets us across midfield with a 27-yard carry. That was absolutely huge. As now we have a lot of space to work with. We'll give it to Robinson. And that's his first carry of the game, and it's going to go for a loss of three. Right now, it really is live by the run, die by the run. As we either get big pickups or we lose yards. Simmons comes in, does neither of those things, gets a couple of yards there. Third and ten now. And we are four of five on our third downs to this point, but I'm not certain that we convert this. Step back, looking to throw. And A should be open if Wilson can catch it. He's going to be short of the line to gain this time, but I'm going to go for this one. Based off of our kicker's leg that we saw earlier, we could hit a field goal from this distance, but uh, I want a touchdown. We need to make sure that we're doing enough, and this could be big Albert Johnson. <laughs> a little shimmy shake there, and then kind of face planted into a defender. Uh, it was just all too easy of a conversion. Uh, they sold out to stop the run to the running back but forgot that Albert does have legs even if they're not the most useful here we step back and we can't get the pass off in time B was coming open it's a sack for a loss of eight though they rushed six and we had literally no time any time more than four comes at us we are in big trouble and even when four come at us we are still going to be in trouble giving it to Zach Wilson again just to try to make this more manageable and we do get back to a third and nine but I am tired of having to convert these. Uh, Albert, relying on his arm way too much at the moment. Kind of like John Wilson on that out route. And I'm going to throw it. Oh, they jumped it. Oh, wow. They jumped it all too easily. Got lucky there. It's now fourth and nine. And I'm going to try to do what I think is the smart thing and just kick the field goal. I already missed one today. Not going to miss them both. That one down the middle. We'll take our three-point lead. I just, you know, we can't come away empty-handed on the drive. Nine yards is definitely no guarantee. So we allow the kicker to get some redemption. And then we'll just let the defense go back to work. A good kick from Jones, but it doesn't look like we're going to stop these guys short anytime soon. A broken tackle. Another broken tackle. And again, it just feels like the game wants Central Michigan to do really, really well. A minute and 35 left in this third quarter. We're trying to hold on. A stop from the defense would be absolutely massive. We'll see if we can see that, though, as there's just a wide-open curl route. A deep curl, but it goes for 16 yards. I don't feel like this zone has worked for us once in this game, so I'm kind of going to abandon it at this point. This one a run that we should have had the chance to stop, but nobody can get the tackle, and it's another 15 yards. For how dominant the defense started this game, they have fallen off in a real hurry. This one's going to be a run out towards the edge, and thankfully Lane is able to hold on to him. That's a stop for a loss. We really needed that just to stop the bleeding, if only temporarily. 
And we can force them into an interesting spot. This one, quarterback keeper on. I don't know if that was an option or not. He slides down three yards short of the line to gain. And I got to be honest here, this quarterback is kind of slippery. Hard to get as they're going to look to throw on this one. We'll see what we can do Bring in pressure. My coverage just a little bit too soft. They needed three. They got three. Just knew they were going to go to the air the second I called the blitz. This time we call the blitz though. And well, it doesn't matter if we stuff the hole. They are going to break the tackle and then get four yards skying to the air. Every single play bringing the Chippewas closer to the end zone. And I just can't help but feel like we're not going to be able to keep them out of it. Two backs. Step back to throw. Curl routes wide open. Poole gets the tackle, but coverage just way too soft. What can we do to slow these guys down at all? Ten seconds now left in the third quarter. I feel like I can expect to run, but no, it's another play action trying to have some sort of coverage all the time in the world. Oh my gosh, I tried to bait that one, but just missed the pick. Oh, that would have been huge. So close to a pick six instead a five-yard reception as we come to the close of the third quarter and into the fourth we go. We have a three-point lead, but it very much feels like Central Michigan is about to take a four-point lead themselves, and it'll be up to the offense of, of all things to really give us a chance to win. So to start this fourth quarter, it is going to be a second and five inside the 10, which is not good. Calling this one a run. They do hand it off. Should be a stop. A big loss of three. Third and eight. And they pretty much have to score a touchdown to convert. So we know that they're going to pass. Almost certainly. I could not see them doing anything else. What can we do to stop it? They step back to throw. Quarterback sheds one sack. But there's three Eagles in the area. And that will drop him for a huge loss. And a little bit of bend, but don't break from the defense as the pressure gets there and forces a fourth and 16. Almost certainly they are going to make this field goal unless we could block it. Timing, nah, never going to be there. Too risky for me to send it like I can on an extra point. Kick is up and good, and it's 17 all with five minutes left in the game. Well, I'm going to take this chance to return our first kick of the half. See what we can do with Poole bringing this one out of the end zone. I can hope for a good blocking, but actually, yeah, that's great blocking so long as there's not any penalties. We take that from five yards deep in the end zone to the 29. Well, they know what's coming. I got to imagine. The question is, what can they do to stop it? Running the ball on first down. A huge hole up the middle for Jerome Simmons. And once again, he gets a big pickup for us early in a drive. He's averaging almost 10 yards a carry. Five carries for 48 yards is very impressive as we will step back to throw, which could be risky, but outside the pocket A is wide open. We'll give it to Morrison. He'll step out of bounds after getting 13 yards. Now, I don't want to say too much, so a little knock on wood here because I feel like we might score too quick and maybe it's time to start burning the clock a little bit. If it's going to be this easy, we could be in trouble. Stan Williams comes in and runs for a yard there. That's the first carry for the third string running back. And we're going to go triple option. So Stan and Jerome. Seeing what we can do. This triple option is big, big for us. We're going to hand it off to Stan Williams. And Stan Williams is going to take it the distance. Oh, just barely. The diving tackle missed. 43 yards into the end zone for Stan. He continues his trend of late game heroics for us. And like I said, a little bit worried that we would score too quick. That one took like a minute off the clock. I'm going to try to draw these guys offside and see if we can get a free play on the two point conversion. Or maybe we don't get the penalty, but <laughs> I just kind of felt like it's a rivalry game. Let's go for two. That was, uh, it wasn't fully intended, but it works out 25 17 now. So we take an eight point lead with four minutes left in the game. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on Central Michigan because now not only do they need to score a touchdown, but they have to convert the two-point conversion as well. Well, first and 10. Again, bringing pressure. Trying to get to this quarterback early. He steps back to throw. Wide open man. And he catches it going out of bounds. Travis Rivera's had a great game so far. 12 of 15 for this quarterback. 
And we need to slow them down a little bit, but I think we just need to slow them down in general. Can't have too much time left on the clock here. Quarterback kind of scrambling. Can we get there with Jackson? I'm going to try to strip the ball from this guy. There's the fumble. And Blair recovers the ball, and that could be enough to win it. That was absolutely insane. I don't know how they don't come up with, with, with it, but the intentional strip from Lane there. And we really punished the quarterback from taking off and running there. So with less than four minutes to go, now the offense has the ball and can just burn the clock. Huge in a rivalry game to have that possibility. Stan Williams, five yards on the first carry of the drive. And I'm going to try to get the Chippewas to burn their timeouts as soon as possible. Even if this is just a three and out, it's so massive for us as Stan continues to run really well at the end of the game. This is a third and one, but I'm going to call it four down territory just so that we can burn as much clock as possible and have a chance to put the dagger in them here. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. It's another big run from Stan Williams. He's got a little bit of a convoy, and he's got another 20 yards inside the red zone. He's done this multiple times this season, coming in late in the game and just absolutely dominating. And it makes me question... Whether or not it was a mistake to uh, bench him for Jerome Simmons as the second stringer. Central Michigan, they're taking their first time out. I'm going to have to stick with the decision, but I wish that, uh, I don't know, I wish Stan would have shown this earlier in the season when we were giving him more reps. Second and nine to him. He's got a decent little chunk, and it's third and five now with a minute and 49. And I'm just going to continue to run. Give it to Stan Williams. Let him do his work. Not a whole lot of space there, but he breaks a tackle. And he got the first and goal. That's going to be game. How massive is that? He is a man on a mission. And with no timeouts left for Central Michigan, I think that's going to be it for him. Unless we score a touchdown. Uh, but I'm going to try to save that for the final play of the game. This play will take us to less than a minute remaining. Stan Williams remaining in. His stamina, pretty impressive. He's getting a lot of carries in a row here. Could have probably just ran it straight in there. But we'll just take our two yards and let the clock continue to burn. And now on third and goal again, handing it off to him up the middle. I don't want him to score, though. I want to score on fourth and goal as, clock, as the clock expires. So just run along the goal line there, take our yard, and then go in the hurry up and call one more run for him. He deserves the touchdown. Can we give it to him, though? Snapping the ball with two seconds left on the clock, out towards the edge. Williams into the end zone. And I think for the second game in a row, I think it's the second game in a row, Stan Williams is player of the game, 100%. No doubt in my mind. This is 31 to 17. We can go ahead and just kick this extra point to finish it off. Clark puts it through. 32 to 17 is the final score. As we come away with a rivalry win, it felt like it was going to be close at the start of the half. The defense was struggling, but then once they held them to a field goal and Stan Williams came in the game, it was over. How about Eric Lane, though, with the strip on the quarterback as he was scrambling and then Blair to somehow fall on it and seal the deal. Fi uh, just a fantastic job from the team on that one. And they deserve to celebrate. Stan Williams is the player of the game at the end of it. 11 carries for 90 yards and a pair of touchdowns. And he deserved every yard that he got. Uh, that extends our winning streak to seven. And... The momentum just continues. A uh, couple games left. We are really rolling now. So just another good game at the end of it. We are uh, one bad throw from Albert on that interception from potentially holding them to 10 points. And Corey Poole even dropped an interception that would have been massive. Uh, but at the end of it, we ran for 230, passed for 109, and held them to 79 and 146 of their own. So looking really good there. Again, dominating the time of possession, but we're used to that. Stan is our offensive player of the game, and Eric Lane has to be defensive player of the game. Two tackles for loss, and then that massive forced fumble near the end. So we advance to 8-2 and two on the season. We just keep winning. Might be enough for us to crack the top 20, and we will advance the week towards Ball State. Two home games to finish out the year, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, 
crossing our fingers that some crazy amount of chaos could happen and we could sneak into the playoffs. We do end up getting locked out by Arthur Roberts in that left guard, so hopefully we can open the door there. Uh, but that's going to have to wait for next episode. What won't have to wait for next episode, as we reach number 19th in the country on a seven-game winning streak, uh, what won't have to wait is we'll take a look at some uh, team stats this season. Albert Johnson, 82nd in the country in passing. Uh, Durham Finch, 126th in rushing. Receiving leaders, we have nobody up there. Tackle leaders don't matter, but Frank Blair with his two picks puts him at 220th. I don't know if that's impressive. How about kicking? We've hit a 39-yarder. Puts Clark at 101st. All right, team stats. What are people doing? No, individual stats? Season stats. What are our guys doing so far this season? Albert Johnson, 118 for 197 for nine touchdowns. And 11 picks is it terrible, throwing at 59%. Rushing wise, Durham Finch has the most 689 yards. Stan Williams has 317, and then you start to drop off. Uh, Jerome 264, nobody else over 100, but a lot of touchdowns spread out. Durham with two, Stan with five, Jerome with three. Uh, the fullback Jeremy Robertson has six, leading the team there, and then Albert has four of his own. Receiving leaders Mark Morris, 26 catches for 281 yards. Uh, John Wilson has 200 yards and two touchdowns. Zach Wilson has 314 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, and then a touchdown each for Curtis Mitchell and Durham Finch Jr. On defense, leading the way with sacks is Troy Carter. He's got five. Fox and Graham have three. And then Cannon, Whitfield, and Rawls all have one with Rashid Reyes having one of his own. And then interceptions-wise, two for a bunch of guys, Frank Blair, Chris Fox, Corey Poole, and Samuel Thomas all have two interceptions. Do we have any defensive touchdowns? We have uh, a bunch of forced fumbles, but not a whole lot of fumble recoveries. Frank Blair actually has the most there. So he's honestly probably the best uh, on defense for the team, but no defensive touchdowns this season. Kind of hurts a little bit. As far as conference standings go, we are tied with Ball State for our conference record. The Cardinals might be 6-4, and four, but they are 6-1 in conference, and we play them this week, so the winner of this game, for sure, uh, I would expect to go to the MAC Conference Championship game. We are looking better than them, but you just never know what's going to happen. They are a 75 overall team. On the other side, Ohio is leading the way. We've already beaten the Bobcats. Or maybe we lost to them? I don't remember. Maybe... No, yeah, we beat them 28-17. Or no, they beat us 28-17. That's right. It was our second loss in a row, and it was a disappointing one. So a chance maybe for us to get revenge. They have a pretty clear lead over uh, Miami and Akron. So we'll expect to see them in the conference championship game should we beat Ball State. I will take a look at the other conferences uh, at the start of the next episode, but unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you've enjoyed this one, uh, please feel free to like. Uh, you know, I always ask for it, but it does legitimately make a difference uh, on having this video be seen by more people. And if you want to be notified when new videos get posted, please feel free to subscribe as well. And then once you've done both of those, you can head down to the description uh, where the, I've got links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Gootmaster. So also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Gootmaster. You guys are the great boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.